you're one of us. We have to work together. So it's you! Why you low down, dirty, stinking, backbiting Namek? Bring it on! Hey guys, Poohhead189 here, and I apologize for how long this video took to release. I want to drop at least one video a month, if not more, but I was extra busy this past month. Anyway, let's get into a deep dive on the Namekians. The Namekians are an extraterrestrial race of humanoids hailing from the verdant, peaceful world of planet Namek. They're a slug-like, almost reptilian race of beings with deeply green skin and pinkish undertones along their arms, legs, and stomach. It also should be noted that Toriyama never drew a Namekian's feet, so we have no idea what they really look like from his perspective. Toyotaro drew them, uh, at least from what I recall, but I just want to give that a little bit of trivia. Namekians also tend to fluctuate in height quite highly, though many of them are quite large. As he's the most prominent Namekian, we'll use Piccolo as the main example in this video. Piccolo himself stands very close to 7.5 feet tall, and we can surmise King Piccolo was even larger, if not around that height at least. And of course, Guru is huge. Piccolo Jr. likely was made smaller than King Piccolo, at least a bit, uh, to make him sort of more presentable to draw, but he's still massive. The closest in height amongst the Z fighters to Piccolo is Tien, who stands a few inches above six feet. Uh, that's still quite big, though, considering the average Japanese man is around five and a half feet tall. Uh, but back to the Namekians, let's dive into their physiology. Namekians are an agender, asexual race. Uh, their reproduction is a fairly simple affair. The Namekian people have a grand elder who produces eggs through his mouth and fathers the entire people. It's difficult to tell how many grand elders lived at a single time in the Namekians' heyday, as the race, when we were first introduced, was severely depleted in number. It's doubtful Guru could father millions of children at a time, considering he only birthed a little over a hundred himself, but we're never given that sort of information. And while I will discuss more about it in a bit, it appears that even a Namekian that is not a Grand Elder can spawn mutant children, or children that are copies of themselves, as King Piccolo did. Namekians, curiously, do not need to eat food in order to sustain themselves. They merely need water to survive, though curiously, they do have prominent canines in their teeth, almost like fangs, and they also have uh, fairly sharp uh, fingernails that look very close to claws. Which means from an evolutionary standpoint, we can speculate uh, their teeth and claws were either used in defense or some sort of bluff in their ancient past. They also have extremely good, keen hearing, much like how Saiyans, at least at the beginning of the series, have a really good sense of smell. Probably the clearest indication of this is when Future Trunks arrived and decided to speak with Goku privately, away from the group, but Piccolo could hear every word spoken. Namekians are also very long-lived, able to live for centuries at a time. Grand Elder Guru, who we all know died of old age in the series, passed away at 501 years old. Apparently, the nameless Namekian, who split into Piccolo and Kami, respectively, was 19 years older than even Guru. Namekian bodies, well actually, maybe it's just because Guru spawned hundreds of children, or over 100 children, and King Piccolo and Kami just didn't do that. Um, at least Kami didn't. Oh well, that's a bit of speculation. But uh, Namekian bodies are also very malleable, with different capabilities that are very useful in a variety of circumstances. For one, since they are not required to eat but can choose to do so, they can use their stomachs as storage devices, such as when Kami was caught in the jar and Piccolo swallowed it. And they can regurgitate items quite easily, as shown in that arc. They also can stretch their arms dozens of feet, and potentially other parts of their anatomy as well. Of course, one of their most notable abilities is the ability to increase their size. Obviously, the best example of this is Piccolo Jr. growing to tower over Goku during the fight in the 23rd Tournament Finals. And last, but definitely not least, Namekians are able to withstand immense punishment most others could not, as not only are their bodies a bit more pliable than a normal person's, but they are able to regenerate limbs and even major aspects of their anatomy like lizards with their tails. 
However, it seems the regeneration is not an ability one waits for or that happens over time with lizards, but it's a conscious choice by the Namekian themselves. Not only that, but it seems certain aspects of the regeneration is directly tied to the power of the individual. For instance, Piccolo has always been able to regenerate a damaged arm. Yet as Piccolo grew stronger, his arms did as well, meaning he needed to wait a bit longer for his power to return, or else if he regenerated too quickly, he would be reduced in strength. Also, the average Namekian cannot deal with, say, losing their entire torso. Piccolo himself was maimed after Frieza shot a death beam through his chest, and Piccolo was also very hurt and near dead when Cell blasted a hole through his torso. Yet later on, once Piccolo had enough ki, he could survive his entire body being destroyed as long as his head remained intact. Although, a quick side note, even though Piccolo was defeated, having a hole shot through him twice with Frieza and Cell, he still survived, unlike what we might expect from an Earthling or a Saiyan, which is one reason why Namekians just survive things better. Um, it's an obvious thing to point out, but I feel like I would be remiss if I did not mention it. Now, a small talk on their history. We are not given too much information on their race or planet before the series begins, but we do know a few details. It seems a few centuries before Dragon Ball begins, there was a massive cataclysm that racked the planet Namek, destroying most of its people and many of its forests. So damaging was this mysterious catastrophe that only two members of the entire species were said to have survived, or are known to have survived. Guru, who would later birth the rest of the Namekian people, and the nameless Namekian who would later split into Kami and Piccolo. And to tie this segment into the one based on the Namekian's physiology, Namekian gardens are not tended for normal agriculture, as they do not need to eat. Instead, the Namekians were merely trying to reseed their world with the beautiful trees that once covered the green planet. Now, let's get into the clan system of the Namekian people. There are three known clans, though it is hard to gauge on whether there used to be more. The most common one, and likely the most useful clan, is the Dragon Clan. Members of the Dragon Clan serve as either dutiful gardeners, wards of the Dragon Balls, mystics, and elders of their people. They seem to be the tenders of the civilization, and the older ones are leaders, sages of wisdom, and potentially sires for their people, like Guru. It takes a member of the Dragon Clan in order to create the Dragon Balls, though their rank and experience will determine what the Ball's capabilities will be. Other skills of Dragon Clan members uh, tend to be magical in nature, such as Piccolo's clothes beam, Guru's ability to awaken the hidden potential locked within someone's body, and Dende's healing ability. Guru, Mori, Kami, Dende, and even Piccolo are members of the Dragon Clan. Next is the Warrior Clan, and we know very little about this clan, as we only see one member of it in the modern series, meaning Nail. They are defenders of the world and of the Namekian elders. However, it is hard to determine their exact roles and if they were more or less specialized, or if there were differing groups of the clan, or if they did not defend the planet at all, but they were only tasked with defending the Grand Elder. Uh, this is likely not true, but that does seem to be Nail's only task once we meet him in chapter 251 in the manga. Whatever the full extent of their responsibilities are, they are a clan for those Namekians specializing in combat. Nail's power was immense, particularly for that time in the series. Frieza's scouter reads his power level at 42,000, which was far stronger than Kui, Dodoria, Zarbon, Vegeta for the majority of his time on Namek, and entirely likely stronger than a number of the Ginyu Force members. In fact, unless your name was Goku, Frieza, or Captain Ginyu, if you fought Nail, you were going to have a bad time of it. Frieza himself said he would want Nail as a subordinate, and, since, and because Nail is of the Warrior Clan, once he fused with Piccolo, one could argue Piccolo was of both the Dragon and Warrior Clan. Finally, we get to the Demon Clan. This clan, despite being introduced first in the series, is an oddity amongst Namekian clans. Sired by Demon King Piccolo, the Demon Clan consists of him and his mutated offspring. Called demons early on, they seem to have some nominal Namekian traits but are otherwise quite varied in appearance. It's hard to gauge what a normal Namekian would think of them, 
but they seem to be what happens when a Namekian who is not the Grand Elder wants to spawn children. They also apparently have some unique properties other Namekians do not. It's likely due to Kami's status as God of Earth, and King Piccolo as the antithesis of that, but apparently if a demon clansman kills you, you are sent to an endless limbo rather than to the other world like your standard death grants you, for instance. King Piccolo also loses his youth or energy the more he births his spawn, and it is unknown if Guru is affected in the same fashion, although like I said earlier, that might be one reason why Guru aged slightly more quickly than, than the nameless Namekian. The last member of the Demon Clan is, of course, Piccolo Jr. Uh, evidently, a Namekian can make a sort of reincarnation of himself, and while I would speculate it likely takes up a lot of one's life force, we only saw King Piccolo do it when he was already dying, so it is difficult to be certain. But, uh, to go through all of it now, Piccolo seemed to be a member of all three clans in some form or fashion. Demon Clan originally, and then he became a member of the Dragon Clan once the Demon Clan was destroyed and Piccolo's heart changed. Um, and, and also, certainly, once he fused with Kami. And the Warrior Clan when he fused with Nail. So he kind of... He kind of shows parts of all of the current Namekian culture that we know of. Now let's go into some of their abilities. Namekians are also unique in that they have their own racial form of fusion. Just as you would expect, the fusion consists of two people, or two Namekians, fusing into a more powerful being. Unlike the fusion dance or the Patara earrings, however, the Namekian version requires there to be two Namekians, and oddly enough, the product of the fusion is not really an equal fusion between the two fused members. In this version of fusion, there is a dominant subject and a subordinate subject. The dominant subject is the Namekian whose body and personality are primary. The body will remain relatively unchanged, and the personality will be dominant. The subordinate will be integrated into the body of the other, and though they retain some form of sentience, they will mostly be absorbed into the dominant subject, though at least shown in the anime, there can be times when the subordinate can still see and act according to their own will. The fusion seems to consistently show that the dominant subject merely needs stand there and place their hand on the chest of the subordinate, and with the subordinate's consent and will and likely knowledge of the technique, they will fuse into the dominant subject's body. The result is a fusion where the Namekian's power is raised dramatically, just like you'd expect from any fusion, really. Now, to segue into the last segment of the video, let's talk about Namekians and their martial arts, which is something not many people really hone in on and talk about. I will go into a deep dive on training and earthling training versus those races from space, such as Saiyans, in the next video. However, let's scratch the surface a bit. It is clear that much of the training and more powerful versions of martial arts on Earth is due to Kami's influence. And while I don't think we can give Kami all of the credit, it seems Namekians know techniques that became a staple for the series moving forward. The ability to lower and raise one's power level, for example, and the ability to sense ki seems to be originally Namekian. In Chapter 253, when Frieza and his goons are harassing Namekian villagers, three young Dragon Clan fighters show up to fight and defend their people. On the Scouter readings, the Frieza henchmen believe their power levels are merely 1,000, but as soon as the fight begins, they raise their power levels to 3,000, and these three Namekians seem to be a good indicator of the average, fit Dragon Clan member. According to Vegeta and Nappa in Chapter 214, Namekians supposedly have an above-average power level amongst the universe, which gives us a good indication of the general strength of the Namekian people. They are not too surprised that Piccolo killed Raditz, considering he is a Namekian, and honestly, considering the Daizenshu 7 puts Piccolo's power at around 3500 when Vegeta and Nappa arrive, he would have around the average power level for a healthy Namekian fighter. But I digress, let's back up and analyze it a bit. If we can take the Daizenshu at its word, and in my opinion, sometimes you can't if the manga contradicts it, but let's do it now. And if the manga states uh, that Piccolo's power level was 408, slightly less than a year prior to when Vegeta and Nappa um, arrived, that means he multiplied his power by a figure of 8 in less than a year. Not only that, but after his death, 
He ran Snake Way and arrived on King Kai's planet for a very short amount of time. He had only been dead a matter of weeks, and yet once he is wished back on planet Namek and he finds Nail, Nail acts like Piccolo is already amazingly strong. And to reiterate, Nail had a power level of 42,000, which means Piccolo's power level was close to that or far higher. Let's be conservative and say his power level is around 60,000. That means his power level increased by 17 times in that short amount of time. We can probably factor in King Kai's gravity for, to help with that, but that is still astounding. And of course, uh, by the time Mecha Frieza and his father King Cold arrive on Earth and Trunks kills them, when Goku arrives and he wonders if either Vegeta or Piccolo were the ones that killed them, obviously neither of them had the strength, but the mere fact Goku wondered if it was Vegeta or Piccolo means that Piccolo had gotten even stronger after his fusion with Nail, or at least probably. And probably the best example of exponential growth was during the three-year training arc before the androids arrived. Piccolo went from shaking in his boots, sensing Frieza and King Cold, and likely still being not as strong as Frieza's lower-powered final form, to when the androids arrived, he absolutely dominated a fight with Android 20, or Dr. Giro, which is almost a Super Saiyan level increase in strength. And to go back to Piccolo's power level increasing but between Raditz and uh, Vegeta and Nappa arriving, and also when Piccolo's power increased further from training later, you could make the argument that Ten Shinhan and Yamcha and Krillin uh, had similar power level raises, but that factors into the fact that they were training under Kami, and Piccolo himself had no trainer except himself, but he still increased his power far more than them on his own, because apparently, or we can surmise at least, that Piccolo already had the Namekian skills and training methods that Kami gave to them. So apparently Namekian training uh, is pivotal, and it appears that whenever Piccolo truly tries, he consistently grows the strongest, fastest, when it comes to your standard training, not including transformations like finding new Super Saiyan forms. And considering Nail had a huge power level of 42,000, which for the time was insane, and even the average peaceful Dragon Clan member had an above average strength in the universe, it becomes clear to this scholar that Namekian training techniques have allowed them and the Earthlings who have trained under them to get the maximum amount of benefits from training in the least amount of time, at least in the original manga. So in conclusion, the Namekian people are peaceful and rustic, and yet there is far more to them than meets the eye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you want to, and I always welcome comments. Thanks guys. Until next time.